Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 62. 62. Uh, Kevin LeBanc. Okay. And Andre Nazaroff. Ooh, Andre Nazaroff. Wow, big dude. Really big dude. Yeah. We could use some of that right now. Yeah. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about the Week in Review, as well as some guys who have maybe been ghosts lately. Uh, we'll talk about the three keys to getting the Sharks out of their hole, along with November and EASHL teams and Fantasy Hockey Leagues. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. What is that on your lip? Ah! Oh my god. Ah! 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 Is that a chinchilla? It's Yosemite Sam! Freddie Mercury's alive! So obviously Aaron and I are having a little bit of fun here with the, uh, what we call them, the lip chinchillas, right? So, uh, I mean, there, there is a reason that we're doing this. It's not just to look silly. The uh, We're going to talk about this later on in the episode as well, but the uh, month of November, Movember, uh, mustache only, is to raise uh, awareness for men's health issues. So not just things like prostate cancer, but also mental health issues. Mm-hmm. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, phone number at the bottom of the screen. We'll probably put it in the description down below as well. Yep. Uh, if there's anything that you're dealing with and you need someone to talk to, uh, these are the folks you can go ahead and give a call and they will uh, certainly be uh, able to help you out. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to, to throw in there about that. but No, just a lot of people are going through things yeah. and you wouldn't know it. So uh, if you need help, uh, please feel free to call that phone number. It's free and you will get the help that you need. Very good. And uh, we're going to be doing this uh, throughout the month of November. We'll, we'll open up our shows uh, with this information so that it's front and center. First and foremost, you guys don't have to go digging through the episode to figure that stuff out. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to start digging through the episode. Uh, what are we talking about now? A week in review. Week in review. So Not so hot. <laughs> the start of this week yeah. was the end of the last road trip that they just had. Uh, and that was the game in Boston. Now, right. This is probably the one of the worst games that they've played, which is saying a lot uh, for the season. So uh, going into Boston, get into uh, some penalty trouble early on, mm-hmm. on very tired legs. Uh, they end up losing five to one, which is just embarrassing. Uh, they looked embarrassed. They looked mm-hmm. they looked ready to before the start of the third period. They looked like they were ready to be on the flight home to be done with the road trip. Yeah. So mentally, they just were not prepared or at this game. Checked really. out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So uh, it was ugly. And, um, in fact, we have a little quote here after the game, post-game with uh, Brent Burns, kind of talking about um, how he thought about, like, as uh, the season, not just this game, but but what the problems are with the season. So let's take a look at this. Well, I don't think it's the same mistakes. I think we had a lot of – there's been mistakes every game, but I I think we fixed some and, you know, and then with other things come different – different mistakes and different, uh, um, you know, issues, I think. Um, yeah, at the start, it was it was a lot of rush and a lot of turnover mistakes. And, you know, lately it's, it's you know, been stuff in our zone. And, um, you know, it's a game of mistakes, but you could try to limit those and, and create, create some from the other side. And, uh, you know, it's tough when you, you're playing uh, in your zone a lot against a team like that. It's, they're going to capitalize. So you see Burns kind of explaining that it's not really one thing. I think a lot of people are kind of like, well, what what's wrong with the Sharks? Mm-hmm. How can we fix it? And we'll actually get into that later in the show, but what we think is going to help. But um, Burns makes a great point. You know, there, there were problems early on, and they would fix that, and then another problem would pop up, and then they'd fix that, and then another problem that's just kind of snowballing. Yeah. And we got, we went through this during our live episode today because we had a lot of questions from fans about uh, what's going on with the sharks and how to fix it. So um, I think it was a it was a good kind of breakdown of what's going on uh, in that I guess in the yeah. locker room in a way, um, just a kind of behind the scenes thing of of what the sharks are going through. Yeah, and you made the analogy of holes in a boat. And they're constantly shoving their fingers in the holes to try to block the, you know, the, the water from coming through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you get one thing fixed and figured out and another thing springs up. And you fix that and another thing springs up. Um, you know, and then obviously you start running out of fingers, you pull your finger out of the hole and then that problem pops up again, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, just, you know, a, a great quote there from Brent Burns kind of describing, you know, the issues that the team's having, at least, um, you know, up until the point of the Boston game, um, which is, you know, a very unfortunate. Now, 
on the Toronto game, if we remember from the week prior, um, you would call that a scheduled loss, right? Correct. So I looked at this Boston game, and I think we said it last week as well. Mm-hmm. I said, this one feels like a scheduled loss to me because it's the last game of the road trip. They've only had the one day uh, between the travel, right? And there was, I think it was another one of those where it was three games in four nights or something to that effect. And they, I think we talked about like five games in, in eight nights or whatever yeah. it was, right? So they're just constantly playing games in, uh, throughout this trip here. So um, it's a, a real rough run for, for me to, to see them play in this game because it was just, you know, you're going up against Boston. Yeah. This is the, the um, you know, Eastern Conference champions. They were within a game. They went to game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. E- exactly. So yeah. this is a very strong team. They didn't change that much. It's a very strong team. And you've got this tired, beat up Sharks team, you know, after having played this entire road trip and then they have to go into Boston. And it just yeah. felt like a scheduled loss to me. And that's ended up being what it was. You know, One of the worst performances of the road trip yeah. as well. So. One thing that was really cool about that game, there yeah. were three 40 year olds playing in that game. <laughs> Marlo Thornton and Zidane Chara. Chara, who is 42 or 43. I yeah. Think. Uh, so he's even got a couple years on them. He, but that's pretty amazing, I think. An old Three goat. guys playing, and they're playing some pretty serious minutes. Not You know, they're not fourth-line grinders or yeah. anything. So uh, kudos to them. Absolutely. So yeah. then after the Boston game, we uh, come back home, and everyone thinks, oh, good, we're done with the road trip. This is our chance to get back on the right foot. Uh, we played against Winnipeg, and <laughs> everyone thought that, <laughs> mostly me. Like, I thought, okay, they're going to get some rest because they came back on a like, probably Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, um, and they weren't playing until Friday. So they got kind of probably one full day of rest, right. a day of practice, and then the game. So better than, you know, one day off uh, or one day in between. Mm-hmm. So they actually came out playing really well. I thought that was definitely by far the best game that I've seen them play this season. Unfortunately, one costly turnover in in their own zone with a minute 20 left right. or something like that. Um, and it, this time it was Tomash Hurdle who uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically turned the puck over right in front of his own goal and uh, Winnipeg just buried it. And yeah. it, it was it was tough to watch because they were playing so well. They had Winnipeg on their heels. This was pretty much a must win. I mean, not almost every game is going to be a must win now at this point for the Sharks, <laughs> but I thought for sure this game was going to be in the bag for them, and it was not. And um, th- How many shots did they have? They, the they came out <laughs> storming like they really did. They, they, they played a really good game. Um, they, they came out with 53 shots at the end of the game. They had 53 shots on goal mm-hmm. to, to just 19 by Winnipeg. So, um, but, you know, it, there's a funny stat. I think you said it was like 0-4-1 or something like that. I mean, yeah. franchise-wide or lifetime, whatever it is. Uh, whenever the Sharks get over 50-something shots on goal and they just don't seem to win. So I think that kind of speaks to a, a quality over quantity kind of thing. And in this game, we got the quantity. I don't know if the quality was there. Um, unfortunately, the 19 shots that were put on goal... Um, Enough of them were of good enough quality that uh, they were able to beat Martin Jones there. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those things that we talked about uh, previously, you know, playing when you don't have the lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to get into some more of that and the numbers that are behind that as well. But it, it always, you know, it, it hurts when you're not coming out the right way. So Another thing we talk about, throwing that much rubber on a goalie, mm-hmm. that goalie is usually in the zone, right? Because they're really focused, really waiting for the next shot to come in. Uh, Martin Jones, 19 shots on goal. Like, and he let yeah. in three, and Hellebuck had 53 shots hitting him, peppering him. Yep. I mean, that's that's a lot of concentration. We've seen Martin Jones in the playoffs against uh, the Vegas Knights. It was a game six mm-hmm. or game five. I can't six, remember. I think, yeah. uh, he stole that game, and they had, I think they had over 50 shots in the game, mm-hmm. and that went into overtime. So, um, kind of something that we had talked about before, too, about goalies yeah. getting peppered, you know, not blocking so many shots that you don't want to block shots but you kind of want to let some of those go through mm-hmm. but um but anyway. we've heard that from not only just from nhl goalies i think even um koshinash from the the barracuda had said that too it's nice yeah. getting uh you know the feel of the puck and getting getting hit with it because it kind of mm-hmm. gets you into the flow of the game when you're totally. only facing 19 over the course of the entire game it's kind of hard to get into the flow so i'm not making an excuse for him necessarily but again just something to consider there that's maybe one of the reasons why there's a low amount of shots, but you know they some of them tend to go in. So anyway, yeah. Um, so there was also a goal that was called back in this game, and it was very unfortunate. We had a lot of people commenting on the live again mm-hmm. about this, and just overall, it seems like the sharks kind of the the refs are on the sharks in a way where they're just reversing calls, reversing goals, and the sharks are getting the short end of the stick. 
I, there's no conspiracy theory. There's the refs do not hate the Sharks. The refs hate every team. Or they don't hate. <laughs> I, I mean that as a joke. They don't hate every team. But there's <laughs> no fan base that goes. I'm glad the refs on our side. Yeah, right. Okay. That, that doesn't happen. So um, the refs are on nobody's side. They just they call the game unbiased. They, they call it as it is. Now going to that specific call that was called back. LeBanc had his stick on Hellebuck's pad and he pushed his leg into the goal. Then the puck squirts out, Kane flips it in and scores. Yes, it was interference. Yes, it was the correct call. Um, I think the way I look at it is if this, if you reverse the roles, if it was Martin Jones having his pad down and someone pushes his pad in and then they score a goal right after, would you want that goal call back? Yes, absolutely, because he interfered with them. So I have no problem with it. What I have a problem with is the next shift. 20 seconds later, yeah. Winnipeg comes down and scores a goal. Yeah. Um, it was kind of blown coverage. It was a very emotional time. I mean, right now the Sharks are looking for every little piece of luck that they can get, and when it doesn't go their way, it hurts. It was a home game. You heard the crowd yeah. booing the refs right afterwards, mm -hmm. booing you know, booing after the, the goal is called back, and then booing right when Winnipeg comes down and scores. So it went from two to one Sharks, Sharks finally getting the lead, to one to two, yeah. like getting uh, yeah. behind again after coming back two to tie. Two goal tight. swing. Right, really, totally, yeah. yeah. So it was brutal. Um, we have a quote here from from Couture after the game asking about uh, how he thought the Sharks were playing and, and all that. So we'll play that right here. What do you think of this 10 out of 14 games where the other team scored first? Well, I didn't know that stat until now. Um, it's never good when you're chasing a game. When you fall behind, um, you, know, you may maybe take an extra chance here or there when you're trying to play catch up. So um, we would like to get the lead tomorrow night, make the other team try and play catch up on us because that's when you, you create opportunities when they're taking chances. And besides the result, would you say uh, this was the response that you're looking for from the guys? Yeah, I thought we played well. I mean, it's probably up there with our best game of the season. Disappointing to lose, very disappointing to lose, but uh, you know, you take positives in games like these and in times like this and we played hard, we played well, just didn't get the result. So those words from the captain there, you know, uh, he had just found out about that stat, right? The yeah. uh, the, the 10, ten and games. 14. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you just you don't want to deal with because um, it's going to be hard to come back from that. Mm -hmm. And we're, we saw that in this game. And we're going to see it in the Vancouver game, which uh, I don't know if many of you know, my birthday, November 2nd. Uh, we played Vancouver, and I was thinking, okay, cool, we're going to bring him some good luck. And, yeah, I'm apparently not good luck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't go to any more games I'm going to stop going to games. <laughs> Games, I think maybe you had I don't a lot know. of other people. I'm Goodness sure. gracious! I tell you what, the best, the most entertaining thing that happened during that game was someone tried to climb over the glass. <laughs> maybe we could throw a picture up with that or something. I don't know, but some guy was trying to climb over the glass. They escorted him out of there with the police and everything else. The rest of the game was sort of a dud, to be honest with you. But it was a five-two loss. Uh, again, did not come out the right way. This is becoming a theme, right? Um, the Sharks get down. Either they get down early, which is even worse, or they just get down uh, in, in the first uh, period mm -hmm. or in just the first goal against, let's just say. Um, and the Sharks continue to play from behind. It's just not a recipe for success. Yeah, and uh, one of the guys that that is kind of on the hot seat a little bit in terms of the players is Timo Meyer. He is not pulling his weight. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more, but... They there was a question asked after the game about um, slow starts and, and how that's affecting the Sharks and and here's what Timo had to say about it. Yeah, uh, I mean you know when you kind of lose a lot of games, uh, you might get a little in your your head and uh, and think too much. Uh, we 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 got to go out there, play hard, have the right attitude, and uh, play within our system, and then that that's when the, our game's gonna come. Uh, it, it starts with the attitude. You know, going back a little bit to what you said, the Boston game is kind of a scheduled loss. Right. Not that every back-to-back -back is a scheduled loss. I don't want to say this one was because Vancouver is an up-and-coming team. They are good. They are dangerous. Uh, Pedersen is is the real deal. So he, he's having no sophomore slump. Um, but I, I to me, I think after the Winnipeg game, it was a very deflating game to play probably your best hockey as a team as a whole um, minus the last minute 20. Um, and not winning the game, and that was deflating, and that carried over into the Vancouver game. Um, I'm sure they probably had maybe some tired legs, but just mentally, 
it just wasn't there. They they couldn't get anything going, couldn't get any momentum going. Mm-hmm. I think they took a bunch of penalties. Vancouver just seemed to score on every single chance that they had. So, it, again, more deflating. Um, and, again, and uh, we don't really like to blame the goalies or anything, but Aaron Dell just couldn't really come up with a big save at that point. So it just got worse and worse and snowballed once again. And all of a sudden they're way behind. Mm-hmm. I think they are down 4 nothing at one point, right? Yeah. So uh, it's just it's really hard to come back out of that. And there are some some guys other than Timo that are that are struggling. Yeah, right. um, well, Timo being one of them. But, right. but going back to one thing that you said before we get there about Aaron Dell, you know, I, I saw uh, an article by Kevin Kurz recently where he says, you know, at some point the goalie just needs to make a save, right? Um, needs to make a save at those key moments. My only problem with that is that you, it's a key moment when the puck goes in the net. But there are plenty of times where the goalies have made the save in key moments if you want to call it that, um, and for the people on the podcast, I'm, I'm using air quotes, but <laughs> it, it's it's a key moment when it goes in the back of the net. But how about when he makes the save on you know a, a spectacular save? Because there are times where we see Martin Jones mm-hmm. and Aaron Dell make spectacular saves, and nobody says, "Oh, that was a key, sa- that was a key save at a key moment." If the puck goes in the back of the net, all of a sudden that becomes a key moment. If they make a save, they just made a save. It's a key save in the key moment when the Sharks come back and win, which they haven't been doing. There you go. So, I don't know. I just think it's it's not fair to categorize that they're not making the saves at those key moments because I feel like many times they are making a save and they're keeping their team in the game, but, again, that this defensive structure around them sometimes is failing them yeah. and they're not able to clear the puck out and then the puck goes in. And it's like, well, then you blame the goalie. Well, you know, he needs to make a save at that key moment. It's like, but he just did. Yeah. Right. I and feel then the like second and third shot, finally it goes in. Right. Yeah. So I feel like we need a little disclaimer here almost every okay, week. Every about, week. Yeah. <laughs> like we defend Jones and we defend Dell in a way. Right. But we don't think that they're elite goalies. That's not what we want to convey. Right. We are defending more because people are just dumping on them, basically. Like almost blaming everything on them, yeah. which I don't think we don't think is very fair. We think there's equal blame that go around. The whole entire team, the defense, the forwards, and the goalies. Yes, the goalies are to blame on some of these, but not on all of them. So um, yeah. it's more of us. Like so many people are beating down the goalies that we're kind of going the other way. That's that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're just trying to keep the the the, the balance, yes. if you will, right? Because yeah. all you hear about is how bad the goaltending is, and I just I'm I'm honestly I'm just not buying it. I'm not saying they're phenomenal. I'm not saying they're elite. Obviously, neither of our goalies are. But I just have a really hard time with saying every time a goal goes in, that was a key a key save that should have been made, because there are plenty of other times where they've made saves that you know kept the the Sharks in the game. And the Sharks look when you score one goal, two goals, right? You're probably not winning that game. You yeah. still need the goal support. So how about those key shots that should have went in? How about the key pass that didn't get it that should have not been intercepted? Mm-hmm. How about there's a lot of different things that are going on in the game and just dump on the goaltenders. I just I'm not buying it. I'm sorry, but uh, that's how it is. Anyway, so in terms of ghosts and whatnot, yeah. guys that are just not showing up. You know, hey, we just talked about how about that shot that should have gone on the net. Well, Timo is sitting on what two goals this season now? Two goals, two goals, two fifteen s- games. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's. For a guy that was a 30-plus goal scorer, that's not enough. And now a $6 million man. Okay. Right? He's just not living up to his contract. Yeah. And I don't want to just, you know, dump on him for that. But he is a goal scorer. He's going to go on streaks, and he just hasn't streaked yet. Yeah. But he needs to get it together. He needs to get his game and find it and uh, start putting the puck in the goal. Um, And the other guy is El Capitan, Logan Couture. (laughs) And I'm... He'll be the first one to tell you. He, he's yeah. very highly critical of himself. He has one goal so far this season. So combined... One and a half. One and a half. He <laughs> should have two, but uh, it went off a of Kane skate. Yeah, it, right? it, 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 it deflected yeah. off of Kane skate. It was going in the goal. It was like, going in the goal anyway. The goal. And you could tell he was, he was not, I don't want to say upset, but he was just like frustrated. Like, like, like oh, <sighs> man, I needed that one kind of... Right? Yeah. Um, Even Kane looked back and I'm like, oh, sorry. He dude. felt really bad. <laughs> he felt really bad. Um, but anyway, combined, those guys are being outscored by Barkley Gaudreau. <laughs> that says a lot yeah. right there, right? You need these two guys. You need you need Meyer, you need Couture um, to really start scoring goals. These guys, you know, if they each had six goals, so 12 more, like, what is that? Nine more goals. <laughs> Math. <laughs> There you go. I was Nine told more there goals. would be no math. <laughs> Nine more goals on the season as right. a whole, right? I, it's a couple that's, wins. That's a couple wins right there. 
So these guys need to get going. They need to get their sticks on the pucks and get yeah. them in the goal. Absolutely. Now, if, I, if there's going to be, an, uh, again, on this show, I try to be a little bit more of an optimist, right? So um, if I'm taking an optimist view to these players having low goal totals, it's that this is not their best effort, right? That's the optimist view is that this is not their best effort. They're below their baseline. They're below default. Okay, so if we can get back to normal Sharks hockey, right? What back I, to the baseline. What do I always call that? What do you call it? A market correction. A market correction. Because they're so. Here's the line. This is where they should be. They're down here. Right. There's going to be a market correction to get them back. Okay. Even. I like that. So uh, we are underperforming right now. You can hope that we're going to be at a point where we're kind of overachieving, right? Maybe scoring more goals than they should, but kind of like you said, a market correction. Mm -hmm. But that is the optimist view of this. Is that yeah, they are not this bad consistently. They're bad right now. So hopefully they can get back to a spot where you know they're back to their baseline. They're back to scoring at a more regular pace. They're not constantly playing from behind. Um, they're making their crisp passes. They're not you know making these either suicide passes where guys getting drilled or yeah. passes just you know an errant one where it just kind of goes off the guy's stick and off into oblivion. We've seen that now happen a bunch of times where the puck just explodes almost yeah. as if it's Nick DeSimone and his. Uh, you know, bomb, bomb bobble there. That's yeah. You know, I just had to bring that one back into the fold. Anyway, I mean, but, but again, this is this is where I look at it and go, you know what? This team is playing really bad, way worse than they should. So again, like you said, market correction. That's the thing I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to uh, them getting back to that. And you know, we do have a very long home stand. Hopefully, this is um, it's a great opportunity for them. November is kind of make or break. I think. Yeah. They got to get back up to 500 or better, mm -hmm. and this is the best way to do it is when you're home. So sharks better <laughs> they better start winning this better start putting the puck in the net <laughs> and uh, making the shark tank loud and uh, a hard place to play in for other teams. And you may ask yourself, uh, how are the sharks going to be able to do that? Well, Aaron and I have talked a little bit and we came up with three keys and these three keys are going to be brought to you by La Villa over in Willow Glen. Please feel free to go check them out. They are sponsoring this segment. So we feed the team. We feed the team. There you go. Well, we don't. They feed the team. Right. That's their but slogan. It's supposed to be their slogan. So yeah. we feed. Anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, first key. First key is uh, don't chase the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard, was it Logan saying that? I think it was his quote, don't chase the game. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the quote that we had earlier. So we looked up the stats, and this is a very telling on the shark season, right? Um, they've played 903 minutes of hockey. Mm -hmm. Of those 903 minutes, you know how many they've been behind? Uh, 453. That is over 50% of the game. Every game they've that's, been. That's just them playing behind. Yes. That's just behind. Right. They play over half the amount of time. Just that. That should be about your tied time. Yes. Right? The amount of time that you are tied in the game because you always start the game tied. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that right? That's usually how it works. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, the amount of time they've, they've spent tied mm -hmm. is uh, 26%, 235 minutes. That's not good. No. And that leaves 24% of the time they've had the lead. That's not good. Mm, That's no. not good. So first key of the game, don't chase the game. In other words, get that first goal. Keep the puck out of your net. Get the first goal. Make the other team chase after you instead of you chasing the game. That's That's key number one. Yep, key number one. So key number two was, again, kind of what I've been always talking about here is defense first. Now, again, we just got done talking about the goaltenders and how I don't feel that everything is, should be laid at the goaltender's feet. Well, this kind of goes in with that, right? So if the Sharks are taking care of their zone first, the defensive zone, they're taking care of their house, um, that's where I see them getting possession of the puck back, right? So this is kind of what, what's happening right now, right? Everyone's getting really worried about putting the puck in the net. They're gripping their sticks too tight, and they're trying to do too much. So instead of dealing with all of that, just focus on the defensive side first. Take care of your house first. That's it, okay? So as they bring the puck in, make sure we're pushing the puck to the outside. Make sure those second chances are not becoming second chances, that they're either getting covered or uh, you know the, the rebound's getting pushed out. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get possession of the puck in the defensive zone. Once you're able to do that, then you work on your breakout, right? So you don't want to have to just focus solely on, oh my gosh, we're down, we need to score goals. So if you can take care of your own end, then you don't have to worry so much about your goaltender making a spectacular save, of which 
Jones and Dell have shown that they can do even just this season. I think mm. they both played fairly well. So if we can help them out a little bit more, take care of our own zone, make sure that the puck isn't getting into these very high danger chance areas, and consistently, right, uh, if we're not making errant passes and we're uh, being more responsible about being back so they're not getting odd man rushes the other mm. direction, again, for me, it's all about the possession. As long as you're possessing the puck, the other team's not. And the best place to do that, to regain possession, is right back in your zone, push them to the outside, get the puck back, then you can worry about the offense taking care of itself. And I do think that this team has enough ingredients uh, to still be threatening offensively. You've got, I mean, just from the blue line alone, you've got two guys who are very offensively minded. And even though you've got three right wingers who are no longer a part of the team uh, in your top nine, uh, I think that the rest of the team uh, should be able to compensate. Couture, Meyer, if they can get themselves going. Then you've got Hurdle, and Kane's been playing phenomenally, really. Yeah. I mean, he has. I mean, offensively and throwing his body around as well, he's been doing everything really well out there. So I do think this team has enough firepower. And like you said, Barclay Goodrow, he's got more goals than the other two combined. So um, he's actually he's, he's stepping his game up. I'm really happy to see him doing that. So Right, I'm not trying to take anything away from Goodrow. Oh, I'm no. very happy. That's about where he should be. But that's just that yeah. you shouldn't be outscoring your so team yeah. Goals. <laughs> Again, I think as long as you take care of your your zone first, the offense will come. And even Couture said this last season. You know, it, it doesn't seem like it, but the offense comes from the defense. So defense first. That's second key. Go ahead. Third key, kiss. And I'm not talking about Ooh, Prince. Kiss Cam. Kiss. Keep it simple. <laughs> uh, the Sharks are kind of doing too much right now, and it's not working, and it's getting frustrating, and their confidence level is at very, very low right now. Keeping it simple, um, making the making the passes, making the plays. I think in the in what I see a lot of is they try and do possession a little bit, and this goes to Hurdle's goal, or mm -hmm. Hurdle's turnover to Winnipeg's goal. Trying to do too much, he was tired at the end of his shift, and he tried to take the puck out of his own zone, got it stripped, and then they put it right back into the goal. So um, in that situation, I think a lot of the times the Sharks are trying to uh, keep control of the puck and possess it out of their own zone when sometimes the best play is to just keep it simple, mm -hmm. chip it out. Chip it yeah. out, get that line change, make sure you get it deep into the other zone so you can get a full line change and not get caught, which happens a lot to the Sharks. Uh, and they get those odd man breaks coming back the other way. Or you get guys stuck on the ice and they're tired and they can't move and then they get burned on it. So I think keeping it simple, especially in the next... I don't know, yeah. handful of games, get your confidence level back up. Then you can start getting more creative. Then you can start doing what normal fun Sharks hockey is. <laughs> yeah, and that's just the thing. You know, you look at a guy like Eric Carlson, he's extremely creative out mm -hmm. there. But, um, you know, it, you're down a goal and you're trying to do it all yourself. And you just need to, again, trust in the system. Uh, as long as everyone's playing the same system, then I think you're, they'll just be fine. But when you've got, you know, someone who's running around out there trying to do too much, Gripping the stick too tight, as you said, you know, it's that's the recipe for, uh, you know, failure, not a recipe for success. So stick with the system, uh, play uh, the the simple passes. Those are usually the best ones. I mean, again, one of the goals that we saw that was so so great that started off with Eric Carlson going from one end of the ice all the way across the blue line on the other end was a nice little four foot pass to Logan Couture. From there, it opened up. You know, mm -hmm. burn the pass over to Burns, and then the the shot pass that went down to Evander Kane, and he tipped it right in. So that doesn't happen unless you get that nice, very simple little pass right over to the Couture to, to start it all off. And I think that's just what they need to do. So uh, done with that. Those are the three the three keys to success. So yep. I'm sure they're they're watching and taking notes. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, next on the list, I think we were talking next, about uh, Movember. We're yeah. going to talk about Movember. Okay. So uh, we'll put the link down here, and it'll also be down in our description. Uh, for our team page, we have a team... Uh, page for the two of us um it is moteam.com slash the dash fin dash factor how about that uh if you'd like to donate please do you can also go to our individual pages which you can click on through our team page um and what we like to do is kind of do maybe like i don't want to say challenge is the right word but if you would like to donate please donate any amount will do uh, but leave a very funny comment about how disgusting our mustaches are, and we will highlight them uh, every episode. So uh, keep it coming throughout the entire month of November. Uh, this could get really fun. And if you don't want to put your name up there, you can donate anonymously, which is totally fine. Either way, it's a donation. So um, please help uh, men's health, men's mental health, and physical health. 
and uh, we'd appreciate it very much. And that's a good point to make there is that you, your donation does go towards uh, men's health issues. So things like, again, the main ones are like the prostate cancer mm -hmm. and uh, mental health issues, right? So um, that donation does go towards that. This is not like, uh, you know, Super Chat during the lives where it goes to us. So um, we're just kind of representatives for our group, doing the best we can to help raise uh, some awareness with this nasty thing across my lip <laughs> uh, and uh, some money, obviously, for, for the cause, for a good cause. So um, if you can find it within yourselves to do that, please uh, go ahead and do do so. And I think that's it for November. That's yeah? it, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, actually, really quick, um, November also happens to be uh, Hockey Fights Cancer Month mm -hmm. uh, all throughout the NHL. It's not exactly related to November or anything, but I did want to show off a couple things. First, um, the jersey behind me, you guys must have seen this last season, I think. I'm sure you did because you've tuned in and watched since then. <laughs> uh, but this was uh, one that I picked up, and I, I really do like it. It's uh, I don't know if many of you guys know this, but I actually lost my mom to uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, so this type of stuff is, is kind of near and dear to me. So um, I saw this thing and I just had to get one uh, and I really do like it. So uh, also have the uh, rally towel that they had at the massacre on Tuesday <laughs> or no, on, on the second, Saturday. sorry, no, Saturday, November 2nd, sorry. Um, <laughs> so that that's there. I'm not going to say much more about that because it was kind of a bad memory for me. Um, but and then of course the little uh, this is hockey fights cancer territory sign we just threw up in the back there. So I'm um, just trying to give a little more purple on the set, if you will. So it's great. There, yeah, it lightens you know. it up the, just the, a bit. The black set yeah. that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all done with November and hockey fights cancer again. Really good causes. So. We are jumping into EASHL. So I've got a screenshot for the PS4. Actually, no, should we start with Xbox? No, yeah. you already started. Okay, I already Go started ahead. PS4, sorry. So uh, here's the screenshot for the PS4. So you can see, uh, once again, I am playing more than with anybody <laughs> Anyone else. Anyone else? But that's okay. Um, it's, you know, hey, whatever. Are you Maybe showing our goalie stats on I, this? I'm not showing goalie stats, okay, actually. Okay, good. Are, I think that was, yeah, we don't want to, that, that, we should admit that. Entirely. I played goalie the other night because we actually had six <laughs> people and I volunteered to do it and <laughs> it's terrible. Like I, I, like I didn't practice for a while so yeah. like I couldn't remember every control and it was just, it was a massacre. I think we lost 11. I let in 11 goals. You, yeah, so you, you let in rage you let in, you let in 11 goals and then rage quit. Yeah, so. <laughs> we all rage quit. No, you did. And then we just kind of all followed suit so that we could play again. Right. Because we didn't want you to just sit there. But um, yeah, and then we had another goalie get in there and uh, also lost like 11 to 1 or something like yeah. that. It was pretty gross. But we did not rage quit. And we did not rage quit that one, no. Um, so anyway, that's uh, the, the roster for the PS4. The roster for the Xbox coming at you right now. Um, looks like they've got kind of the, the same thing going on here. Same is, guys, not that many games yeah. going. I think it's harder for them. Um, they, don't they don't all know each other, okay. and they're a way to talk to each other. Uh, we actually have a Discord set up so okay. that we could talk for when we're going to go on, at least. And that actually is in the description down below, so yep. if you want to join that Discord channel, feel free to scroll around there a little bit and then make that uh, little clickety-clack, and then uh, you'll be right in there uh, with everybody else. Yep. Cool. So um, then we have the clip of the week. I was kind of debating on whether or not I should actually do the clip of the week because uh, nobody's really been sending any in. It's kind of just been like me. But I actually found an old one. So um, this one I think is, it might be Zinxy actually. I think he's got a weird name on the back of the jersey. But um, here's a, a short clip and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Puck is dropped and we are underway. This has been one we've been waiting for for a while and it's time to find a score! Wow, what a goal! Nice hands, great finish. Little short break and it's in the net. Once he gets into the clear, this is about two things. His speed to pull away and his calmness to make this beautiful deke to finish this off. So again, I think that was Zinxie from like a long time ago uh, when we first got the game and he pulled a nice little Forsberg move there. So hmm. um, yeah, anyway, uh, if you guys want to join, uh, feel free to search us. TFF is the abbreviation in uh, Xbox as well as PS4. Xbox, I think, has a few more open spaces than the PS4 does, but if I can kick some folks or whatever, let some of the guys in, we will do that as well. And please be sure to uh, kick us some of those clips. Even if you're uh, not a member of the EASHL team that we have, and you just watch the show and you want to show off a little bit, feel free to do that. <laughs> if you've got your own uh, you know, NHL channel or whatever, and we'll go ahead and plug that too. I have no problem with that. So uh, we're, we're very inclusive here. So Yes, we are. No big deal. All right, so go ahead. 
Teal Together? Hashtag that? Teal Together. That's <laughs> us, buddy. Okay, right. go ahead. <laughs> uh, all right, kicking over to Fantasy Hockey League. Uh, here's League One standings, and I am in third place still. Mm-hmm. Haven't moved up, but I haven't moved down. Holding strong. That's great. So uh, hopefully <laughs> this week I can turn around and start moving up. I, I think this is the team where I have Martin Jones, so it's kind of killing me. I'm a goalie, uh. goalie stats, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's my one homer pick I think I took. But anyway, it's coming to bite me. Hopefully he turns it around. Uh, and then here's the look at League Two, and I am still dominating at the top <laughs> there. Uh, it's fun, it's great, and um, there's definitely a difference between the two leagues. There's a lot of trades going on. Mm-hmm. Um, one of these was really bad trade. It was uh, Gusov, Gusev, Gusev, okay. the guy who got traded yeah. from, in real life, got traded from Vegas to New Jersey, Jersey yeah. and he's been a healthy scratch. Someone traded him for Timo Meyer. Ooh. Which, if you look at the stats, I'm sure they're similar because Timo Meyer only has four points. Yeah. But that's a very buy low on Timo Meyer. That was a very good trade for whoever got Timo Meyer. Yeah. Uh, that was like, kind of impressive. Now, I don't veto any trades in fantasy. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's right um, unless it's co- um, collusion. Yeah. Okay. But you have to prove it. How do you prove it? It's kind of hard. Okay. So, it, to me, there should never be any kind of trade vetoes. Okay. I don't care if someone does new to fantasy and doesn't know what they're doing. You'll learn. That's fair. You'll learn. So anyway, that's where we are with fantasy. Very good. And I think that's where we are with the end of the show. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, once again, uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in, especially uh, during those live shows. Sometimes we get some pretty good ideas or some mm-hmm. good comments, and we certainly do love talking with you guys. It's been a whole lot of fun. I know it's been rough this past week, month, entire season so far, but <laughs> um, we do appreciate you guys popping in, saying hi. Uh, throwing those comments our way. It's just just been a a lot of fun being able to chat with you guys. And we had quite a bit of Super Chat money, actually, this time around. That was was pretty cool. I was a little surprised, yeah. Surprised because we were losing so bad. Because we were losing so bad, yeah. (laughs) Maybe they're just throwing pity money at us. Maybe. You know, instead of throwing pity money at us in Super Chat, though, you can visit the store and pick up a a T-shirt or a hat or some stickers or any of that stuff. And be sure to use the uh, coupon code PATTY, P-A-T-T-Y. That'll get you free shipping anywhere in the U.S. So uh, if you guys are, you know, want to look as good as Aaron and I do, um, maybe without the mustaches, (laughs) though. uh, Yeah, what? (laughs) Feel free to visit the store, pick up some merch. We would appreciate it. It certainly does go towards uh, the set and, and all the stuff that we try to do here to keep us running. Very good. Right. We may have a special... May. May have a very special episode coming out this end of this week. And by May, and he means going to. Uh, I'm not going to give it away anymore, but maybe you can comment down below and think who oh. could possibly be coming onto the show. Okay. I like that one. A little surprise for you. Yeah, so uh, let us know who you think might be popping on the show in the comments down below. And if there's anything about any of the topics that you thought was right, wrong, and different, whatever, uh, please go ahead and comment down here as well. Yep. Very good. Okay. So uh, that's it for episode number 62. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, and we will see you guys next week. Next this week. Month. Later this week. Later. Sorry. You just said. Ah. You just said. Yeah. Well, later this week with a special guest. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.